When you run a new utility line, whether it be electrical, gas, water, sewer, or communications, you basically have two choices for where to put it. Overhead, strung across poles, or below the ground. Today, we're talking about the second one, subsurface utilities. I'm Grady, and this is What's That Infrastructure, where we divulge and discover the man-made world around us, and below us too. There are all kinds of utility lines running beneath our feet, under roads, sidewalks, buildings and property, connecting resources to the people who use them. There are distinct advantages to running utilities below the ground. For one, it's often the cheaper solution when compared to other options. Also, subsurface utilities are hidden, so they're less likely to be vandalized or detract from a place's appearance. And finally, they're protected from weather, like freezing temperatures and high winds. We have just about every resource you can think of running in subsurface utilities, including electricity, oil and natural gas, water, sewage, telecommunications, and many more. Here's a couple of underground utilities that you don't see as often. Tiro from Finland sent in this photo of an automated vacuum waste collection system in Helsinki. He said it's basically a packet switch network for recycling since each of these collection points feeds to the same underground vacuum pipe. And Stephen from Pennsylvania sent in another one you don't see often. These pipes are part of a snow melt system which will run a warm liquid to prevent the sidewalk from icing up during the winter. Speaking of winter, Andrew from Newark sent in this photo of a hydrant with a long pole attached. During the winter, snowplows clearing the roads can pile up huge banks of snow covering up the hydrants. In the event of an emergency, this hydrant can quickly be identified with this marker and uncovered from the snow so that firefighters don't have to search for it. As our urban subsurface gets more and more crowded with underground utilities, the possibility of conflicts or damaging an existing line increases. Surprisingly enough, there's no clearinghouse of information documenting the location of buried utilities, at least in the US. And the dangers and potential costs associated with damaging something like a water line or a fiber optic cable are so high that an entire new field of engineering has emerged just to manage the risks. Subsurface Utility Engineering, or just SUE for short. SUE specialists use a handful of methods to identify and locate subsurface utilities. Many public works projects rely on SU data to avoid conflicts with underground utilities during construction. A SU survey can be as simple as drawing a straight line between manholes, but many utility location surveys involve sophisticated investigation techniques like vacuum excavation and even ground penetrating radar. You've probably seen these cryptic spray paint marks locating utilities after a SU survey. In fact, the symbols and colors used are fairly standardized by country. Here's a photo Doug from Sacramento sent in of a Sioux survey locating a combined streetlight and communications conduit below a sidewalk. Some jurisdictions are requiring buried utilities to include sophisticated new identification systems. Adam sent in these photos of an RFID utility marker in Slovakia. This marker gets buried with the utility line so they can be accurately located if someone ever needs to dig here again. Utilities below the ground sometimes need access to air, usually to avoid the buildup of pressure. Sanitary sewer systems are meant to flow by gravity, so if the pipes are properly vented, they work better, just like venting a bottle will allow it to pour more quickly. This is a manhole vent sent in by Joel. If the top of the manhole is below the floodplain, a riser pipe is often required to make sure the line is vented even during flooding conditions. Most gas stations store gasoline in underground tanks below the pumps. These tanks need vents too so that they don't pressurize during the heat of the day. So they also have vent pipes, like these sent in by Jaron from Lincoln, Nebraska. Here's a few more vent pipes sent in by Marty from Vancouver, but he wasn't sure what specifically they were venting. Speaking of things I can't identify, here's a couple more. If you know what they are, let us know in the comments. Timon sent in this photo of a pipe that isn't subsurface at all, but's actually running overhead on poles in Berlin. Pipes carrying liquids are rarely placed above ground in areas that can freeze. 
That and the lifting hooks on the concrete blocks make me think that this is a temporary installation of some kind. Finally, Bert sent in this photo of a beach in Belgium. This is obviously an intake screen, but I have no idea what would be drawing seawater this close to the shore, or why it would be installed above low tide. Put a comment below if you think you know. Thanks again to everyone who sent in photos. It makes me really happy to discover that so many people are interested in videos about infrastructure, and it's really encouraging to receive so many enthusiastic emails. If you've got a picture you'd like to share, send it in to whatsthatinfrastructure at gmail.com. Make sure you mention that it's okay for me to use it in a video and include your mailing address, because if I use your photo in a video, I'll send you a practical engineering sticker. I've got some very cool videos in the works, so if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel. Have a great new year, and as always, thank you for watching, and let me know what you think. Oh,